I put a spell on you. And now you're mine. <laughs> you can't stop the things I do. I ain't lying. I put a spell on you. <laughs> and now you're mine. Which means you can't not watch this video. Just don't stop watching. You can enjoy this wonderful, delightful Hocus Pocus book tag. So, I'm really excited to be doing this book tag for a number of reasons. First off, this, this costume, let's be realistic. This costume is gorgeous. It doesn't fit me at all. I'm really excited for this just because I, I do love Hocus Pocus, even though it's very problematic. We'll get more to that later. I'm just really excited for these questions because there are a lot of amazing things that I can't wait to talk about in this book tag. Just so we're clear, this is a book tag created by Brie from The Lock Practition. She made several of these for Black Wing this year. I'm making one per week. If you haven't already, check out the past two. They were a lot of fun. I am saving the best for last, so hopefully they're getting progressively more fun. I'm going to get started with these questions. I'm really excited because these books, these books are all books that I really, really like. Spoilers, don't look. In the first one, what book would you consider a sweet tooth? Meaning a book you just can't get enough of. I just can't get enough. And I have to go with 112263 by Stephen King. Now I know I think I've talked about this book a lot and there's a reason for that. I've listened to it easily four, maybe five times on audio because I just love the audio book. I love the story. It's fun, it's easy. It's got the quality of classic King with less of the problematic sides. The narrator is one of my favorites. He's just really good. And also it's just time travel. Time travel, 1960s and 50s period piece. I really like it. I'm getting to learn that I don't dislike, what do you call them? The H word, historical fiction, which I thought I didn't like. I think it's just certain periods that I don't like. And this is one that I really do like. It's really interesting time period to explore for a number of reasons. King isn't perfect, but it's just a really fun novel, even though it's thick. Like I said, I've listened to it so many times. And so yeah, it's my candy book. It's candy, candy man, candy man. I can help myself. I've been watching the Lock Petition do a live for Black Queen and they mentioned that movie <laughs> and now it's on my mind. Hopefully I'm still here next week. Anything can happen. Okay, where was I? My eyesight is going. My birthday is this month. I'm turning 30. Name a series or a single book that has magic, vampires, and werewolves. And thou shalt not mention Harry Potter, besides that one joke. Uh, Every Hard Doorway or The Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire. This has everything you could ever want. Even if it's not in this series, it will have a theoretical world where that's going to happen. If you don't know about this series, I mean, who doesn't? It's kind of like um, Chronicles of Narnia, except it's about the kids who get removed from those worlds. Although sometimes you do get to explore those worlds. And it's just, I find it to be a more realistic exploration of this otherworldly type scenario where Narnia isn't always perfect and life isn't always in happily ever after. Moving on to the next one, name a series or a single book that has two sisters that are always also magical. And let's go ahead and start with book three, I think it is, of the Wayward Children series, Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Sean McGuire. And this is about Jack and Jill who are Jack and Jill, they are two twins who were expected to be perfect twins in the sense that they were just a boy and a girl. So ended up naming them Jack, Lynn, and Jill, and uh, maybe Jillian, I don't remember. But uh, they go by Jack and Jill, even though their parents hate it. And it's about their exploration to this magical world. Now then they themselves, may not be strictly magical, although I would argue they have some magical aspects in these magical worlds, but the fact that they are connected to this world is itself a magical location. Now, I'm not going to stop there. I have to keep going because I have so many things I love in the world of magicalness. Next, I want to mention with The Tangled Skein, which is book three of the Incarnations of Mortality series by Piers Anthony. And this book series is one of the most formulaic books you could ever find. It's probably very predictable. The series is very predictable, but it's also a hell of a lot of fun. This was one of the first adult fantasy series or adult series I ever listened to. And I found out about it um, from a professor or teacher rather, my high school teacher and mentor. And I really liked my first time reading with George Waddell, who is actually a fairly big name, I think, in audiobooks. He's like really good, but he also has a very distinct voice that isn't necessarily my favorite, but he's really good at voices. He has really good range of stuff. And so the Incarnation Mortality series is about basically like Greek mythology in the modern day. So the idea is you have these incarnations, which are basically like offices that people can hold, where they will basically do the action of this Greek god. And this one is specifically about fate, but the way the idea is each, there's a book for every different Greek god, and each Greek god has their own way of 
unique way of doing the job as well as transitioning to and from that. And from that sense, it's really creative and it's a lot of magical fun with a nice uh, modern day look at Greek mythology. And while it is very formulaic, it's a hell of a good ride. And I never hear anybody talk about this all because it's super old, but you know what? I remember it being a lot of fun and I wouldn't mind rereading this sometime just because, you know, it's an easy, fun read. I, I, I read this maybe a decade ago, so hopefully there weren't any things that I'm missing. I would really like to uh, do a digger deep into it to see how well it stands up, but it definitely is about that. So where are the sisters? I forgot about that, the sisters. There actually aren't sisters in here that are magical. You, you might could find it in the series, but I, I picked this one in particular because fate was a unique incarnation. Every other incarnation is like one person at a time, but fate is three people in one. So you see this one special incarnation, which is one person, but also three in one. So you have three different individuals who would take the position of incarnation of mortality, where each one will shift at a different time. And at one period throughout, one, at one point in this book, you have a mother and a daughter, both being fate, I believe at the same time. And that's close enough to me to say two magical creatures. Um, and it's also a series I never actually mentioned on this channel. So I wanted to mention it because it is fun. No, there's another one. There's another one that I must mention, Blanca and Roja by Anna Marie McLemore. And this was a magical realism book about two sisters, as well as many others, who are somehow magical. I want to say they're the line of, of women who were first given the ability to have children by making some deal. And the idea is every time they have a daughter, they have two daughters and one daughter will get taken away as a payment. And it's about these two sisters and their life up to this point and having to deal with what's going to be happening. There's some serious magical realism in here. Some, I want to say fairy tale retelling. I don't remember exactly which one. There's also a lot of exploration of gender and sexuality in here. And it's just, it's a really good book. It is YA, but it's, it's so beautifully written and well executed. Highly recommend. Now let's move on to the next one. What is your favorite character to dress up as as Halloween? Now you might say, Josh, how could it not be Winifred Sanderson? Because you look fine as hell. And I know, thank you so much for implying that to the screen in the future. But I have to go with one that I actually created myself. And that is my Georgie outfit. <laughs> Why I have this over my head. Um, you will see me in that, in one of these. I don't want to spoil it too soon. But uh, I like that one because it's dark and I know it doesn't quite fit. Like obviously this doesn't fit either. Like I have a man with a beard. Uh, but <laughs> still, I, I feel like this works better than like a, an adult wearing a yellow hoodie with an arm ripped off. Well, I like it because it was my idea and I, I made that myself. Obviously I bought this somewhere like as a Winifred costume and that is one that I actually created and I think looks really cool and I really like it. And I can't wait to share that with y'all. Okay, uh, editing Josh here. I may have forgotten the most important question, which is have I actually seen Hocus Pocus? And of course I have seen Hocus Pocus. I saw it when I was younger, I used to love it. I rewatched it a few years ago and my thoughts are not as glowing as they once were. Why I love the concept, why I love Bette Midler, and why I love the, everything about it, the idea of it. The actual execution is actually pretty sexist. There are a lot of it that is just really, really outdated, very 90s, and very problematic, but still a lot of fun. They don't want to do a sequel, right? Hopefully they'll like improve it in this modern age, but uh, I could not answer that question because it is obviously the most important question in a Hocus Pocus book deck. This, this wig is whoo, whoo, itchy and hot. If you could have any famous cat, which one would you choose? And there were so many wonderful cats we could choose. And I know Brie picked um, Salem from Sabrina Teenage Witch, and that's a great choice. But I think I have to go with the probably very terrible choice, which is gonna be the, the this is sheer, this is sheer. What is wrong with me? I never actually read Alice in Wonderland. I know this though, but you know that this cat, the cat that you see in this that I have pictured here, just because it's it's weird. It can do magical things, and I I would love that in my life. Yes, please. Moving on uh, from that debacle, who is your favorite fictional warlock of all time? Jesus. That's a joke. Obviously, I don't think Jesus is that great, but he is technically a warlock. Moving on, Gandalf. Gandalf, I think, is a good choice. I love Ian McKellen, and also just the characters are just really good. But at the same time, there's something there that isn't quite meet my personality. Like the Tishashir cat is the personality that I want. Well, as much as I love Gandalf and I love how well it's executed, it never quite emotionally, I know, attached to me, if that makes sense. I think Dumbledore is also a great choice just because I always loved Dumbledore, I love the idea of him. I want to say Dumbledore, the idea of what he could be if the author wasn't such a 
piece of shit. Imagine what might have been if she had actually shown us his queerness in the book or how about in the fucking movie, which is literally about him and his relationship with Grindelwald. Like, why is it that we don't get to see the two having any hint of having a gay relationship? And it's just, imagine the world that was that existed that alternate reality of dumbledore is the dumbledore that is my favorite alternatively severus snape which i know is still harry potter but i do really like severus snape but again this one i feel like i'm attaching more sentiment to alan rickman than the actual severus snape moving on i'm really bad at giving one word answers so you know what i promise you i'll give a single answer for this last question which author would you go trick-or-treating with <laughs> come on Anyone who knows and has read Shauna McGuire, Shauna McGuire is the answer. Yes, please. She is just such a delight. If she is half as much like the her writing style, then she's exactly who I want to be with on Halloween. Every day of the year, please. I, I know I, I did a, a reading vlog back in July of um, reading her newest book, Over the Woodward Wall. I did a reading vlog for that, and she watched it and called it charming. And I liked it. It made my day, made my half of the year, clearly, because I'm still on about that, and I just, I can't get over it. Uh, yeah, and also she has an uncanny resemblance to uh, Shirley Jackson, so another reason to, to want to go trick-or-treating with uh, Sean McGuire. So Sean McGuire, if you're watching this, please send me an email, um, or you know what, just send me, send me a message on Twitter, and we can arrange this. You know what, you just have your publicist call my publicist, which is just me on Twitter, and we'll work it out. But for now, I'll take the spell off of you. You're now free to no longer want to watch me, but uh, that's that, and I'm going to stop rambling now and uh, say toodaloo. Ooh.